Each time a wreck diver descends into the darkness and lays eyes on a shipwreck, he experiences a ghost-like connection to the past. The lure of sunken vessels is that when they plummet to the bottom of the ocean, their stories and their secrets go with them. Like the hulks of metal themselves, such secrets wait patiently for those who are curious enough to come along and discover them. Britannic, the largest ship of her day, sister to Titanic. A 100 foot tall and 900 foot long behemoth that has been resting on her starboard side at the bottom of the Aegean Sea for more than 100 years. Jacques Cousteau and Doc Edgerton discovered her in 1976. Since then, fewer than 100 divers have visited her, not only because access to the wreck is guarded by the Greek government, but because only the most experienced technical divers can reach her 400-foot depth. HMHS Britannic is the third vessel in White Star Line's Olympic class, a class that included Olympic and the famed Titanic. Britannic never knew the luxury of her sister because she was requisitioned by the British Royal Navy as a World War I hospital ship shortly after her launch in 1914. On November 20, 1916, Britannic struck a mine laid by a German U-boat. The blast flooded six of Britannic's watertight compartments. It took her less than an hour to sink. In May of 2019, a team of divers set out to explore Britannic, 104 years after her sinking and more than 40 years since Cousteau first laid eyes on her. Among them were sea rovers Rick Simon and Joe Mezrani. They went to marvel at this legendary wreck, to connect with her history, and to join the ranks of the few who have reached her. But they had their own mystery to solve. One born in 1976, before either Rick or Joe were born, Cousteau, Edgerton, and a team of divers from the Calypso made 68 dives to the wreck. Each time they surfaced, they brought with them priceless artifacts. If sea rovers are anything, they are secret hunters. Rick and Joe, wreck divers who cut their teeth in the waters of the North Atlantic, not only hunt secrets, they hunt treasure. It was only natural that the mystery they sought to solve involved artifacts. Whispers about artifacts taken from Britannic by Cousteau have echoed across generations of divers, with much speculation surrounding the ship's bell. The bell is the heart of a ship. It signals the watch, rings for ceremonies, and of course, sounds the alarm. The bell sounded when Britannic struck the mine and signaled to all on board that the ship would soon sink. It was likely the last man-made sound anyone heard before the sea swallowed her in a thunderous clap. Bells are the highest prize for shipwreck hunters, and this one, the bell of a ship that was not only the largest of its day, but Titanic's twin sister, would have been a crown jewel for an explorer like Cousteau. Some say Cousteau raised the bell and kept it in his private collection. Others say he took it to a museum in Athens or elsewhere in the world. Cousteau was silent on the subject. Cousteau's adventures mesmerized Rick and Joe as children. As adults who now discover and salvage shipwrecks, they often wonder if the rumors were true. Britannic's owner, Simon Mills, wondered too. He told the divers, when I die and go to heaven, the one question I want to ask Cousteau is, what did you do with Britannic's bell? Joe and Rick enjoyed five dives on Britannic in spectacular conditions, but they were still plagued by one question. Did Cousteau raise the ship's bell and hide it away? They spent their sixth and last dive trying to find out. 
Rick and Joe knew where the bell should be, right above the crow's nest, halfway up the main mast. The main mast is broken, but still attached to the ship, with the topmost part resting in the sand, like a massive tree felled in a storm. The pair dropped into the water and first went to the bow. From there, they went straight towards the mast. The divers searched the area of the crow's nest, but the bell was nowhere to be found. As Rick ascended to photograph the ship from above, Joe remained at the crow's nest and descended, doing his best to draw a line from where the bell should have been to the sand below. In his final dive on Britannic, Joe cleared the name of Jacques Cousteau. The team spoke with Mills in the days that followed to tell him yet another Britannic mystery had been solved. Simon's response was simple. I guess when I get to heaven, I owe Jacques Cousteau an apology.